welcome each of you to worship this evening. It's great to have you all here. And if you're here for the first time, where we want you to know we're especially glad you've come. There's information about our church in the pew rack in front of you. Please feel free to take any of those brochures with you. Also, if you're seated near the aisle, we'd appreciate it if you'd fill out one of those red friendship pads and uh, pass that along at this time. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, some of them will be found on your announcement sheet. You'll notice a little later in the service, we're going to be lighting candles. And uh, the basic rule of thumb is you hold the lit candle upright and you tip the unlit candle toward it to light it. That keeps the wax from spilling all over the pew and your lap and it makes you and our custodian happy. So if you could help us with that, we would appreciate that. Uh, we do have nursery care provided, and if you've got little ones with you, you want to keep in the service, you're welcome to do so. But if they start getting a little squirrely and you think maybe they're distracting people around you, you're welcome to get up at any time during the service. And you can either go to the narthex where you can sit and hear the service, or you can come back to the nursery behind us here, and uh, the service is being shown there as well. Poinsettias, uh, people have been really generous in donating lots of poinsettias this year. You can pick those up after the 8.30 service tonight or tomorrow following worship or Tuesday morning. The church office will be open if you would like to uh, pick them up at that time. Also a reminder that tomorrow and the following Sunday, we will just have one worship service at 10 o'clock. So please make note of that if you'll be in worship either Christmas or New Year's Day. Finally, I, I know that people have many different reasons for being here this evening. Dave Conklin has to be here. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's part of his work, and so that's why Dave is here. But some people are here out of habit or tradition. Some have been dragged here by other family members. I see a few of you nodding. You will pay for that later. <laughs> Some are here physically, but mentally, you're still preoccupied with a thousand Christmas preparation details. Some of you are carrying heavy loads, so heavy you're not sure you can handle them, and you're hoping against hope for a word from the Lord tonight, anything to help lighten your burden. And others are genuinely excited to stop and give thanks to the God who came into our world on that first Christmas. No matter what your reason is for being here, I think there's another reason. I think we're here by divine appointment. And so no matter what circumstances brought you here this evening, I hope you'll give this service a chance that you'll open your heart and your mind and see what God will do. At this time, let's all rise and greet each other. <laughs> Stream I don't think it's working quite yet. No, there's no. There's a 38 second delay, but this is frozen. Well, maybe they'll get it fixed by next service. It was working when we tested it before. Okay, you're going for suspense on this one, right? <laughs> so
the last, last, last verse. I play it kind of straight the first two. Or you can not play it like a. <laughs> I just wait so everyone gets like a dirty look. Please do play this or not. God's promise of a Redeemer is fulfilled. Christ is born. We have complete victory over death and evil through the birth of Jesus Christ. Eternal victory is ours both now and forever. This evening we light the Christ candle because Jesus, the light of the world, is born. As this candle burns, we remember that Jesus brings us hope peace, joy, and love now and forever. We remember that Jesus is coming again someday and will bring us to his kingdom to enjoy all these good things forever. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Through this child, this son, we have complete victory. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to our world and for giving us victory over death and evil. Fill us with the power of Jesus to stand firm in your ways both now and every day. Help us to live so that others will be able to see Jesus in us. Amen. Something that's really fun to do during these church holidays is to um, hear from the kids around us how they think it went since we tell the story again and again as they grow up. So this video is, uh, is that. It's ch uh, Christmas According to Kids. An angel came to see Ma Mary. She was doing laundry and then the angel just appeared and she was really scared. So Gabriel was like, Mary, you're gonna have, what? I can't, I can't say a good word. Mary, you're gonna have a baby. I, you're gonna have a baby. You will call him Jesus. And then Mary was like, I'm not gonna have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager. I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. And so they met up. They went to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. <laughs> oh, a camel. Oh, yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. Well, they tried to go to a hotel, and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. The keeper said, we have no rooms. Literally, no rooms. <laughs> so Mary, and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, the only place in here in Bethlehem hand that, that you can stay, stay is a staple. And then he just pointed the way and they followed. When the shepherds were taking care of the sheep, then they saw angels. The angel said, a new baby is getting born who is king of the Jews. The angel were singing. And then the shepherd said, I think we should go there and meet him. The second, I think, said, yeah, I agree with you. And the other said, yeah, me too. They had to walk through a bunch of grass and bushes, maybe have to camp out a night. 
And then the lion then heard about it, and then a star appeared. Well, we should probably follow that star. It's pointing down to the barn. So maybe we should follow it. Maybe. So the wise men went to Jesus. They gave them gifts. A stuffed animal, like a hippo one, to have at home. Some diapers, <laughs> and some wipes, and some milk, <laughs> some shoes, some Jordans. Gold, ring, and Latimer. And I don't know how I would survive in that barn. Too stinky, too crowded, and ugh. I think he probably pooped because the room is very smelly. Thank you for coming. He's adorable. He's going to be our best friend. I love you, and you're the best baby i ever seen. There, I said it. <laughs> the new baby is going to change the world. Let's all stand and sing praise to that baby.
Wait, 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 wait. Take two. Okay, we're trying to warm her back up. Here we go. You will. Good work, dude. Ready, two. Have a seat.
Will you please pray with me? Almighty God, our light shining in the darkness, we give you our thanks and praise that the light of your love came into the world in the person of your son, Jesus. God from God, light from light. Through your son, through this newborn baby that we welcome tonight, you created everything that is seen and unseen. Through your son, you gave us life, and through your son, you gave eternal life to all who would believe in him. This is good news. Indeed, this is good news of great joy, the best news of all. Lord, we ask tonight that you would minister to each of us here as we have need, that you might search our hearts and know those things that weigh us down, and that in your wondrous love and infinite wisdom, you might lift our burdens. Astonish us with the gift of your love. Kindle hearts that have grown cold. Help us to feel within our innermost being these good tidings of great joy. That unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Despite the tensions and difficulties of 2016, this evening we look toward the future with hope knowing that life is full of possibilities because of the birth of the Christ child who came to save us all through his example of a life perfectly lived, a life that brought liberation to the captives, freedom to the enslaved, hope to the downtrodden, and strength to the weak. We look outside of ourselves tonight and we see hope for the world. We see hope for our nation. We see hope for the church. And then, Lord God, we look back into our hearts and we see hope for ourselves, that we might love ourselves as you have loved us, that we might be gracious with ourselves as you are so gracious to us, that we might forgive others or forgive ourselves as you have forgiven us. Receive now the gift of our hope and gratitude. It's all that we have to give you. Enable us to share the news of this hope with others through word and deed that the whole world may experience this good news for themselves and be transformed by it. Help us to keep the light of your love burning within us for everyone to see this holy night and from this day forward. We pray this in the name of the one whose coming we celebrate and who taught us to pray in this way, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'll be reading from Luke 2, verses 1 through 7, the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver that child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Teenage girl, my 
much too young, unprepared for what's to come. A baby changes everything. Not a ring on her hand, all her dreams and all her plans, a baby changes everything, a baby changes everything. The man she loves, she never touched. How will she keep his trust? A baby changes everything. A baby changes everything. And she cries. She has to leave, go far away. Heaven knows she can't stay. A baby changes everything. She can feel it's coming soon. But there's no place and there's no room. A baby changes everything. A baby changes everything. And she cries. And she cries. Shepherds all, Shepherds all gathered round, they gathered round up above. A star shines, a star down. shines down, a baby changes everything. A choir of angels. My whole life was turned around. I was lost, but now I'm found. A baby changes everything. A baby changes everything. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20, the shepherds and the angels. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known that what had been told them about this child and all who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. I just realized I forgot to get a copy of the sermon to Kyle, who's showing the slides, so he has no idea when to change the slides, and he could really mess me up uh, by just randomly changing slides. But I will cue you, Sly, uh, Kyle, please um, have patience with me tonight. This Advent season, I've been preaching about journeys, looking at ways in which our life journeys intersect with people we find in the Bible, especially those stories related to Christmas. Tonight we come to the journey to Bethlehem. Let's look closely at this well-known story that Jen and Abby just read to us, paying attention to the reactions of the characters as well as our own reactions. We start with Joseph and Mary. When Joseph envisioned his life, taking a long trip over rough country to Bethlehem with an unexpectedly pregnant wife did not factor in. Everyone assumed that this child was his, and since it was obviously conceived before they were married, it would have brought great shame, not only to Mary, but to him. And yet, he obeyed God and married her. And now, because of an edict from the hated Roman occupiers, he was forced to travel all the way from Nazareth down to Bethlehem in order to register for the harsh taxes that would be sent to Rome. I think it's safe to say that Joseph would have had very mixed feelings about this journey to Bethlehem. Although he demonstrated righteousness, compassion, and courage by the way he went about it. Mary also never envisioned beginning her married life this way. She too was obedient to God, agreeing to bear this child, the long promised Messiah, at great personal cost. Being so late in her pregnancy, she must have been physically miserable on this journey and afraid, for she was facing childbirth without the presence and support of family and friends. And childbirth could be pretty dangerous back then, as it is in some places today. Later in the story, we find another reaction of Mary, when after the shepherds come to worship the child and testify to his identity, and now we're ready for the slide, we're told, but Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Mary must have been continually awakening to the implications of what God was doing in and through her at the birth of this child. And she remembered it all, and she spent time thinking about all that had happened and all that was said. 
perhaps that's not a bad response for us to this journey to Bethlehem, to carve out some time to reflect on the wonder and meaning of God coming into our world that first Christmas. Well, the angels are next. They rip open the heavens so they can watch what's happening and praise God for the good news of the great joy to all the people on earth. They were observing a climactic moment in the history of the earth. The great God of the universe, the creator of all there is, was being born to a very young woman as a human child in order to restore God's creation to the way it was intended to be. Sometimes the right thing to do is to not do anything at all and just praise God. Tonight is one of those times. Don't let it pass you by without saying thanks to God for his greatest gift to us. Next come the shepherds. When I think of the shepherds, I'm reminded of the scene in the Charlie Brown Christmas special when Lucy is handing out the parts for the Christmas pageant. And she goes up to Shermie and says, Shermie, you're a shepherd. And if you remember, he responds, every Christmas it's the same. I always end up playing a shepherd. Not a treasured role. But the shepherds play an important part in the story. They're the very first ones to hear about the birth of Jesus. They listened carefully to the angels, and then they hurried to check it out for themselves, finding the child and his parents and telling everyone what they had seen and heard. That's a pretty good response to this journey, too. I like the fact that they dropped everything to go and see Jesus for themselves. Words of angels are pretty convincing, I imagine, but there's nothing quite like seeing it for yourself. Some of you have heard the good news of Jesus coming into the world perhaps many times, but you're not sure what all the fuss is about. You've heard others talk about it and how it has affected the way they live, but you've never taken the time to check it out for yourself, to carefully read those stories about Jesus in the four Gospels, to learn what this man Jesus was really like, to have a serious conversation with someone who is a follower of Jesus so you can voice your doubts and ask your questions. People in every single country around the world are gathering tonight to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, some doing so at considerable risk. Maybe they're on to something. Check it out. Well, I've got just two more responses to the birth of Jesus for us to consider. First, how did the rest of the world respond to this journey to Bethlehem and the birth of Jesus? You know, the Romans, the Jewish leaders, community leaders, and common everyday people in Israel. How did they react? Well, mostly they ignored it. They didn't know anything about it. But later, they did react. Paranoid King Herod, fearing the birth of a new king, took violent action to eliminate the threat, killing all the babies in Bethlehem born about the time of Jesus. Later, Herod's successor, along with the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, would get involved in eliminating the threat posed by Jesus. How is Jesus such a threat? Well, the seeds of that are found in the words of the angels. And if I could have the next slide. They say, to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, 
who is the Messiah, the Lord. Now that sounds pretty innocuous. But the problem was the people of Palestine already had a Lord. His name was Caesar Augustus. And he had given himself the title Divi Filius, meaning son of the divine, a title affirmed by the Roman Senate. As Lord, he demanded ultimate loyalty from all his subjects. But the angels proclaimed there is another Lord, a Lord with even higher authority than Caesar, an authority that Jesus recognized and claimed for himself. He claimed to be Lord over Judaism, enraging the priests and the Pharisees. He showed he was Lord over diseases as he healed those who came to him. He even demonstrated he was Lord over creation by calming storms and seas. And the people who saw him recognized his power and authority, and they thronged around him. Political and religious leaders therefore saw him as a threat to the social order and to their authority. And eventually, they had him put to death. There's a sense in which they were right to fear him. For those who followed him did upset the social order as his followers obeyed his instructions to protect the weak and the vulnerable. And his followers continued to flourish long after the fall of the great Roman Empire. Some in the world ignored him, and some still do. Others feared him, as some still do today. What about you? How will you respond to Jesus' coming? Will you obey him and follow him like Joseph and Mary? Will you praise and thank God for his coming like the angels? Like the shepherds, will you go and check it out for yourself? Or will you ignore him or even oppose his work like many in Jesus' day? A woman moved into a small town. She noticed a man named Mr. Gentry who lived in her neighborhood. Every time she walked past his home, she was impressed with his yard, which was filled with a beautiful garden and bright colored flowers. And she couldn't help noticing that Mr. Gentry was always whistling loudly. And she wondered why he was always doing that. So she finally got up the courage to ask him one day when he was working in his garden. He replied that his wife was no longer able to get around and that she had lost her sight. And sure enough, there was a woman sitting on the porch in a rocking chair that she hadn't noticed before. Mr. Gentry continued, since she can't see where I go or what I'm doing, I whistle to let her know where I am. I whistle to let her know that I'm nearby. I whistle to let her know if she ever needs me, I'm right there. Christmas is God whistling. It's a sign that God is on our side, that God cares for us, that God is nearby when we need him. It's a sign that God cares about you. You respond to that good news by opening yourself up to God and learning all you can about what it means to connect with the creator of the world and your creator. I think that's a wonderful response to this journey to Bethlehem. And there is more. We also respond to Christmas by carrying on the work that Jesus began in the world. In the words of author and civil rights leader Howard Thurman, When the song of the angel is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, 
when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace to humanity, to make music in the heart. God has placed you where you are, in your particular family, at the place where you work, in your school, in your community, for a purpose. Are you doing God's work in those places, caring for those who are hurting, standing alongside those who have no one to speak up for them? Are you sharing the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ with others? That's also a very good response to this journey to Bethlehem. How will you respond? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the good news of your coming into the world. Guide us as we respond. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
All right, here's how the next part of our service will go. We're about to sing Silent Night. The ushers will come and they'll read, uh, they'll give to each row, um, they'll begin the candle for the first pers person in the row and then we'll pass the light down the row to each other. So remember to tilt the unlit candle into the lit candle to avoid dripping on each other and on the carpet. After Silent Night, there'll be a time of silence we can enjoy the beauty of the church and the beauty of the moment. And then when the band begins to play Joy to the World, you can uh, put your candles out at that point. And there are places to put your candles as you exit, right here by the doors. with your candles if you like.
And I'll go from this place to love the Lord and love the people, to serve the Lord and serve the people. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain in your hearts forever. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, nos pero año y felicidad. Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, nos pero año y felicidad. A Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad, nos pero año y felicidad. Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, nos pero año y felicidad. I wanna wish you a merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a merry. Good cowbell, good cowbell. <laughs>